Today, we'll be previewing From Row Motorsports as we head into the 2022 NASCAR Cup Series season. Let's go ahead and just jump straight into it. What's going on, guys? It's Daniel, and welcome back to another video. For our motorsports in 2024, we jump into 2022. 2021 for Ferrari Motorsports was a pretty big year for Ferrari Motorsports as they pick up their second victory as an organization as the NASCAR Cup Series as they won the biggest race in the NASCAR Cup Series by winning the Daytona 500 with Michael McDowell. And for the second time, the team is able to make the playoffs with Michael McDowell. And overall, this team showed signs of major, major improvements, at least with Michael McDowell. On the other hand, Anthony Alfredo, his year was pretty forgettable. But Michael McDowell had a massive, massive year in 2021. And for our motorsports going into 2022, we'll be looking at having much more improved season. And I think that they've gotten really close. And I hope with the next gen car, they can show a little bit more speed. And I think that's potentially what they're going to do in 2022. So they're going to have, I think, a pretty big year in 2022. We're just going to have to wait and see what happens. So now let's jump into the drivers who will be driving for Firmware Motorsports in the NASCAR Cup Series in 2022. The first driver to talk about is the factory driver from Firmware Motorsports, Michael McDowell. Like I talk about Michael McDowell, Michael McDowell had his biggest year in his NASCAR Cup Series career. For him, really his breakout year in the NASCAR Cup Series as he had a massive, massive year by, of course, winning the Daytona 500. But through the first 16 or 17 races of the year, he was actually in the NASCAR Cup Series Plus, and I believe he didn't fall outside the top 20 or top 21 points throughout the 2021 season. So Michael McDowell really had a big year in 2021, and like I said, he did really, really well. And I think over the last couple of years, and really since 2020, we've been seeing this kind of improvement from Michael McDowell, where I think he had four or five top 20s throughout the 2021 season, and he was starting to become much more consistent in 2020. In 2021, he really took that major step forward. Of course, eventually he fell out of the playoff contention, and unfortunately, he made it past the round of 16 in 2021, but he looked really, really good in 2021. Now, there are chances, of course, coming for Michael McDowell in 2022 as he's going to have a new crew chief in the 2022 NASCAR Cup Series season as Mark Church Jr.'s car chief Blake Harris is going to be moving over to Ferrari Motorsports to be the crew chief for Michael McDowell in 2022. Drew Bligaserver has been the crew chief for Michael McDowell, I believe, since 2019 or 2020. He's actually going over to crew chief for Stuart Haas Racing in the 10 car for Eric Amarol in 2022. So their base is going to be kind of a similar reunion to Firmware Motorsports from Furniture Racing because you've got Clayton Hughes, who used to be the spotter from our Trick Sheener. He's working as a spotter for the team. And, of course, you've got Blake Harris, who's going to, going to be the crew chief, which I think is a big pickup. Of course, Blake Harris, is now, I don't believe, is ever crew chief in NASCAR Cup Series competition or any type of cup racing competition, but he will be a guy that I think to watch to really, really help Michael McDowell out in 2022. And now let's talk about 2022. What are the overall things that Michael McDowell needs to do in 2022? Of course, improve on to 2021. Because like I said, 2021, Michael McDowell had a pretty good year for his own standards. I would have given it an A- minus here for his standards, considering he overachieved on our expectations by, of course, having a really, really impressive year. And his year was not a fluke. He did extremely well. He's looking to improve in 2022. And I think he's actually going to be able to just do that in 2022. And the big reason, of course, is the next-gen car. And Michael McDowell is a very, very good road course racer. He's a driver who ran really, really well, especially on the road course races in 2021. And I think in 2022, there's a really good chance to improve on those performances and do really well with the next gen car. He's overall been a big fan of the next gen car, especially since he has a lot of that open wheel experience where there's a lot of basically more uh, low downforce and stuff and a lot less downforce and more horsepower in those cars. That experience from open wheel and trans ams and all that stuff, I think that's really going to come into play from Michael Madow going into 2022. So overall, he's looking to improve in 2022. And I'll, let me tell you my expectations for Michael Madow. I think Michael McDowell is going to be an underdog to make the playoffs next year. I know that's a little high expectations for Michael McDowell, but I think he's going to be an underdog to make the playoffs next year. I think he's going to do pretty well in 2022, and I would not be surprised if he contends for some victories next year. I think he's going to get a couple top fives next year. I think he's going to get quite a few top tens next year, especially on the road course races, because I think Michael McDowell is a really, really solid road course racer. And I don't expect Michael McDowell to finish outside the top 25 in points. I think Michael McDowell is going to be around the 17th to 23rd range throughout the year in the points next year, and I think he's going to have a really good chance to make it. I don't think he will make the playoffs just because the competition this year is really, really tough. 
But I think that Michael McDowell overall is going to have a pretty big year in the Cup Series in 2022. So we're looking to see what happens to Michael McDowell going into 2022. But he will be looking to have a major, major year just like he did in 2021. Hopefully he can improve on his 2021 stats and contend for the playoffs and be able to make it in 2021. The other driver that will be driving full-time for the team in 2022, of course, is going to be Todd Gillen. Todd Gillen will be jumping up from the Nasser Camp World Truck Series, where he's driven for Ferrari Motorsports for the last couple of years. So of course, he got one cup, one Truck Series victory in 2021 at Surrogate Americas and only made, got he unfortunately got eliminated in the round of 10. But he had a really, really strong car, and had he not got eliminated in the first round, he would have contended for an opportunity to make the Nasser Camp World Truck Series Final Four because Todd Gillen had a really, really good year, especially in the second half of year in the truck series he was really really showing signs of improvement and he probably should have won more races in 2021 maybe like national the race of ryan priest won or at martinsville where he basically dominated martinsville he could have gotten a second ever win at martinsville todd gillen could have had a massive massive year now like i said he's jumping all the way up from the truck series all the way up to the cup series and that is going to be a little bit of a learning curve for todd gillen going into next year and one thing that's really interesting is he'll be the fourth different driver in four years driving for the team david reagan drove for the team in 20 2019, then he retired for full-time competition. Then in 2020, they had John Hernimacek, who ran full-time as a rookie. Then they had Anthony Alfredo in 2021. And now Todd Gillen will be driving for the team. But unlike the last three drivers, he'll have a multi-year contract with the team. And it makes a lot of sense. In uh, Really, in the long run, it makes a ton of sense to bring Todd Gillen up. Because, of course, he has a sponsorship with Ferrari Motorsports. But, of course, his dad is also tied to their team with their Truck Series program. And Ferrari Motorsports' Truck Series program is associated with DGR Racing and the Campy World Truck Series. And wouldn't surprise me if Ferrari at some point gets an SHR alliance and they move away from the Roush alliance long term. But Ty Gillen also makes a lot of sense. He's also got the last sponsorship, but, of course, has been associated with this 38 car in the past. I believe, I don't remember who his crew chief is going to be. I think it's going to be Chris Osborne or somebody who's going to be crew chief for him in 2022. So, overall, what are the overall expectations for Todd Gillen? Again, he's going to be a rookie in 2022, so you don't really need to have extremely high expectations, especially for a rookie. One thing is I do not think he's going to win the Rookie of the Year honors. I think it's going to come down between Austin Sinegar, Harrison Burton. I know some people mentioned Justin Hilly, who how he potentially could be eligible for the Rookie of the Year honors, but I don't think he's going to be eligible for that since he's ran basically one or two full cup seasons at this point. And I think that's going to honor is going to go to Austin or just because Austin or guy thinks potentially he could have a massive, massive year in the NASCAR Cup Series in 2022. But I think Todd Gillen is going to have some pretty decent runs next year. Overall, Todd Gillen is just coming up to the Cup Series to basically learn and I do think on the short term he's not going to do as amazing but I think long term especially of how talented Todd Gillen is because keep in mind Todd Gillen is only going to be 21 years old at the start of the next NAS of this NASCAR Cup Series season he turns 22 in May or May in May or June I believe so eventually he's going to get older and I think that he's got so much time in his NASCAR Cup Series career and I do think Todd Gillen is a potential generational star in the NASCAR Cup Series but he's going to need to learn in his first year and just don't cause any problems don't cause any trouble. Maybe get one surprising top 10 throughout the year, but just do a little bit better than what Anthony Alfredo did. So I think he's actually doing better than what Alfredo did. I think he won't do better than John Hunter just because John Hunter had a little bit more experience when he got in there. But the one thing that he has a little bit of advantage compared to Anthony Alfredo, who drove the 38 last year, is he actually did have a little bit better experience because, again, he had three or four truck series seasons, and that will help him a little bit considering Anthony Alfredo did not have a full season at all in any sort of competition for jumping in in 2000. 2021. So Todd Gillen 2022 will be lurking to learn, looking to learn. And I think he's got a shot at potentially finishing in the top 20, top 27, 20, 28 points. I think around a 27, 28 position is where he's going to finish in the points and may get one occasional top 10 and may have some top 15s and top 20s. But I'm not expecting him to be a contender unless we go to a super speedway, which you know, of course, Farmer Motorsports is a good team when it comes to super speedway. So I'm really excited to see what Todd Gillen can do in 2022. And I really don't know how he'll do, but I think he could have a pretty good rookie year. But we'll have to wait and see what happens and how he does in 2022. Other little entry we'll talk about is David Reagan. I'm not going to make much on this. David Reagan could possibly run the Daytona 500. There's talk that there could be a third 
uh, third, basically a third front row car for the Daytona 500 2022. There is rumors of that going around in the industry right now, but it really is unclear at the moment if there is going to be a third front row car. Again, I'm not entirely sure. The reason I'm not 100% expecting it right now is just because of the fact of the, the supply chain and supply issues right now. Those should be corrected over time if we can see in 2023 a possible third front row motorsports car, but I think at least for 2022, I'm not entirely sure we're going to see a third car, so I'm not entirely sure that's going to be the case. But Looking overall from our motorsports for 2022, like I mentioned at the beginning of this preview, I think from our motorsports is looking to have a massive, massive year and a massive year improvements, not just on their truck series competition, where of course Zane Smith will be driving their truck in 2022 at from our motorsports in the 38 truck. But both drivers at the team are going to be looking to massively improve this organization. And I think Furman Motorsports in 2022 could have their biggest year they have ever had. Now, I don't think that they're going to win this year, but I think overall Furman Motorsports is going to show a little more than they have been capable of. And I think that they're getting a little bit more of a technical alliance with the four team as well. So I really think that they will improve. And I think Furman Motorsports has slowly been building up over the last couple of years. And like I mentioned, Furman Motorsports in the past has shown that they can continue and and be a little bit faster. I just you, you look at Furman Motorsports as a whole, and when they started off as an organization in NASCAR, they were extremely so, and many, many times they failed to qualify. But when they won that race in 2013 with David Reagan, they actually took a lot of major steps forward starting in 2013, and they started getting a little bit faster in 2014 and 2015. And now they've gone from a team as like a backmarker team to almost very similar to what a JT Doherty Racing is doing right now. They're kind of in that level of JT Doherty, which that's pretty good, all things considered. So so I think Ferrari Motorsports has potential to have a massive, massive year in 2022. I think they've got potential of getting some. We're going to have to wait and see what happens, but we're going to see how Front Row does in 2022. So anyway, that's for today's NASCAR team preview. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe to the channel to get on be notified when a video does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support me on Patreon as well. Let's get your vlog for that and comment with your thoughts on today's episode. What are your expectations for Ferrari Motorsports heading into the 2022 NASCAR Cup Series season? Let me know that in the comments below. I've got a couple special videos that are going to be on the way before the season starts. We're less than 30 days from the season officially starting, and I'm really excited to share you guys what I've got in store. 2022 is just getting started, and we've got some massive products and some big things that are in the works right now that I'm hoping to share with you guys very, very soon. But anyway, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's video, and I'll see you guys next time for some more great NASCAR and other motorsports content on the channel like this. Take care, everybody.